about about a month or so, and um, it's not so crazy because again, what inspired us was the actual quality um, and, and and interesting elements and beauty of the art that the students are making at John McDonough School. It is just mind-boggling. And, and, and from what I understand, you came, you saw, and you said, let's do a show this. together. I think that um, uh, doing work with uh, young artists is essential. And at the McKenna Museum, uh, this is the fourth spring that we'll be showing uh, youth shows. So we've worked with other high schools and community partners that have uh, programs that cater to um, the young, incredible artists in our community. So when Creative Features invited uh, me to come and speak with the students about what my life was like as a curator. Uh, I got to meet everyone and they were phenomenal. They had a lot of questions. They dealt with the fact that I was nervous speaking to them um, and you know showed great interest in working with us in the future. And so that day uh, the idea was sparked uh, by Daniel, the program manager, to go ahead and work with the art students as well um, and the art teacher there to put the show together. Uh, so we're incredibly excited and we saw the work yesterday and it, it looks incredible. I really love the, the size, uh, the scale and the vibrant uh, the vibrancy of the work, so I'm excited about the show. And, um, and I loved that um, we asked the students to get involved in actually hanging the show because what we're trying to teach in the Creative Futures program of the Creative Alliance is not just what it is about making art, but also the business of art. And so they were up there involved in uh, hanging the show. But um, I, I also have two students with us, um, Deontay Jones and um, Alan uh, LaForte, and uh, I want to hear from them on, uh, this is kind of an exciting experience. Alan, this is your first time with a public show? Yes, it, it is my first show there, so I'm very excited about it. What, what, um, what's your expectation? What do you think? You think you're going to sell some work? You think people are going to be interested in your work? I hope so. I, I believe so, yeah. But you've been working uh, in, in art, in visual art, for a long time already, haven't you? I actually have been doing art for, what, over eight years, I believe. Since you were just a little kid? Right. Really? How did you get started? What, what, what inspired you to start working, and, and, and why did you stay with it to the point where you actually started making? I've seen your paintings. They're just, they're just amazing. Uh, what 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 was that spark of, uh, of imagination or, or um, f emotions or whatever it was that took you to to really stay with it and keep making it? I say the loss of my brother. They actually started me painting, but I've been drawing since I was what just a toddler. I get, I picked up a pencil, you no, know, and um, it's everything to me, you know. What do you mean it's everything to you? I mean, it's my life, it's how I express myself, it's how I just go to another world and become someone else, and it, it feels good, it, it feels good just to leave this, uh, this planet. Really? And, and, and tell me about your work, what, what, uh, how would you characterize it? Emotion, like emotion, it expresses a lot of emotions and how I feel and situations I was in, so. But you do it with so much verve. I mean, it's not downbeat. It's not dark. It's it's very upbeat and bright. Uh, it's it's how I express myself. You know, I don't, I don't really. Know. You just it's just it comes out. I, one of the things I think people who don't make art don't understand is that when you make art, you become so engrossed in it, right? So, so tuned, yeah, tuned out, space everybody out. Everything disappears right. and you're just working. And things happen on the canvas that you didn't even expect to happen, right? Right, exactly. exactly. That's what I love about it. That's what I love about it. You travel with it. You go someplace with it. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and Deontay, <clears throat> what about you? you? You, How long have you been making art? Well, like Anna, and I've been making art since I was a toddler, you know, like picking up the pencil and challenging other people who are other artists and it just made me better as a person and as an artist. What were some of the um, real kind of inspirations for you in, in your work? 
Well, everyday life, basically. Like, if I see something going on, I just feel as though, like, I should make a picture just to show that how I feel about a certain thing. Like, a certain day, if I feel as though my day was good, I'll make a good painting just showing how I express myself for that day. And, and um, what keeps you going? Why do you keep doing it? Well, it's just, it's just a habit, I guess you could say. Um, I've been doing it for a while, so it's kind of like, it's just... It's, I got accustomed to it, so every day I just, you know, pick up something and try to make some type of art. Every day? Try. You see, that's what I think people have to think about is, I think sometimes people think artists have it easy, they just have fun, they just, you know, doodle on a, on a canvas, but you all take it very seriously, you really kind of get into it, work at it, right? Right, 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 to become better. And, 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 and what kind of influences have made a difference in, in what you've done? Well, I I had I had a lot of cousins growing up, and they all used to know how to draw and stuff. Plus my uncle, cause he used to always draw. So it's basically your uncle? well, my uncle, his name is Ricky. So he just he just was like an artist, a visual artist who draw a lot. So he used to challenge me, like we used to get in competitions when I was young, just to see who draw better. Obviously, he was gonna win, but you know, it was just competition that pushed me to be better as an artist. Fantastic. And and so what do you think about having your, is this your first show? Yeah, it is my first show. How do you feel about it? Well, I'm very excited. I just want to see how other people feel about the art. And we hope that uh, people are going to actually um, buy some of the work. Jen, what do you think? Um, uh, you know, a lot of people like to go to art shows and they don't necessarily, um, you know, they go for the party and they don't necessarily buy. And one of the things I keep trying to tell people is that don't be afraid to plunk your money down. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are afraid to buy art because they don't know, is it good, where am I going to put it, you know. But it's really just like the artists who make it and they're making it from their emotions. It, your response to it is emotional. And if you have, if you connect with a painting and it feels like something to you and it's important to you, you should buy it. Absolutely. Um, Dr. McKenna particularly is, is a collector that is moved by how his connection is with the work. Um, his collection is not based off of uh, artist names, but based off of uh, a piece that he saw that he loved so much that he wanted to acquire it for the museum so he could share it with everyone else. Um, so I think that it's important to get involved in artists' lives at a very young stage because, uh, for example, uh, Dr. McKenna was working with a young artist named Gustav Blasch who had recently had a show at the New Orleans Museum of Art. Uh, but he's had a relationship with him since he was a young man in an art program in New Orleans East. And now we have four pieces of his in the collection. So I think it's important, one, you can acquire these pieces before the artist is further along in their art career. And you can say that you were one of the first supporters. And so that's essential in, in developing our cultural economy. And I, I don't mean to put a dollar figure on things, but it's true that if you buy from an artist when they're young, and you know something, it's really your reactions to art are almost universal. I've noticed with my husband's work, he's an artist, there are certain pieces that everybody just gravitates to, like Magnus, oh, I really like that piece. And sometimes he's a, you know, artists can also be kind of stubborn. They kind of want to do what they want to do. Hi huh, guys, I think I know, right? But that there'll be one piece that will have a kind of universal appeal. If you feel about that piece, you can buy it. And the prices on the work are going to be extraordinarily low. And, and not just because it's student work, but just because it's emerging, but it's worth so much more already. Every piece that I saw in the show was just so strong. What, give me some idea of, uh, does anybody have any idea in the room about kind of the range of prices of the work? I think the works are in the kind of, you know, less, I think less than uh, $200. I mean, really for the price of a, a, a blouse and a skirt and a pair of shoes, which you have on you today, you can buy an artwork. And then it's forever. Mm -hmm. it, you're it's not going to wear it out. Time. It's exactly. not going to go out of style. It's going to be something you can have on your walls forever. And it only forever. appreciates in value over time. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, and the McKenna Museum is a beautiful museum, I have Thank to say. You. I've, I've been to much. many shows there over the years, mm -hmm. and uh, I've enjoyed every single one of them. They're really, they're just Thank beautiful you. work being shown there. Thank you. And um, I hope we get a lot of people out. Me too. Um, of course, it's this Saturday from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, we're at 2003 Carondelet Street, which is at the corner of St. Andrew. 
Um, and we're hard to miss on that corner with a large white building with the white columns. It's a big, beautiful old house. Mm -hmm. What's the history of that house? The house is 152 years old. Wow. It was built by a steamboat captain named Leathers, who also built the house uh, next door to us, which is a historic oh, landmark. Oh, a big house, yeah. Um, uh, so the space uh, was renovated by Dr. McKenna uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, and has been running really strong. Uh, post Katrina since 2007. So we've been mm -hmm. open since 2003, had some repairs after Katrina, and have been open for the last five years, running really strong. And again, it's it's pretty easy to park around there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You can yeah. find parking right on the Rondelet, street. Right uh, mm -hmm. St. Andrew, Brainard Street. And that's kind of roughly in the vicinity of the Pontchartrain Hotel, right? Just, just good I believe people so. On it's within the same block um, okay. as a great restaurant called the Cheesecake Bistro. Oh, there you go. We're about Copeland's. a block away mm -hmm. from Trolley Stop on St. Andrew. Uh, so we're very easy to find off of St. Charles. I hope everybody comes out and listen. Can you imagine how much better a present a work of art by one of the fantastic artists from John McDonough would be than some big old stuffed toy off the corner or <laughs> the usual plastic roses or something, right? This is, this is a much more interesting work. Um, tell me uh, uh, a little bit more for a second, Alan, on what, what piece do you have in, in the show and, and tell me a little bit about it. Um, I have a piece where it's... How many pieces do you have? I have actually what five pieces that's been shown, and one of the pieces it's it's a New Orleans feel. It's uh, a guy playing a saxophone. The saxophone is um, is unique. It's 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 what. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Take your time. It's 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 different from a, a typical. Right. It's, it's your right. interpretation of a saxophone, right? right? Yeah. Yes. And the whole let me tell you something, uh, guys. There's a lot of paintings out there of uh, players with saxophones. This one is not like any other one you've ever seen. It's really something completely different. And and um, I heard, Alan, is it true that you've been just painting up a storm? And just over the past months, you've painted how many paintings? What over? Oh, 20, 30, 30, 30, 30, yeah. Yeah, oh, 30, it's 30. <laughs> yeah. that, you know what the word for that is? They call that prolific. And what that means is you just churn it out. You just make a <laughs> lot of work. That's amazing, and I want to tell you something. Uh, being prolific as an artist, it's a wonderful thing because you have so much work to sell. It also, you got to find a place for it. <laughs> so uh, we hope that somebody is going to come to the show uh, on Saturday night from seven to nine and buy some of Alan's work because he's got too much work. In fact, if you buy everything that's in the show, then we can put up some more and move right. some of them. And Deontay, what about you? What have you got in the show? Well, I got one painting that's kind of special to me. Um, I painted a picture of the world, basically, but in the picture I use different strips of green for the, the earth. And it shows how, you know, there's different cultures, different people inside the world, and it just changes. It's kind of it's kind of cool. I, I saw it, and it is kind of cool, and I, that's another painting that I hope somebody buys and puts on their mother's wall. So art for Mother's Day, right? And 